Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, I need to get used to this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So good afternoon. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a big pleasure to be here talking to you. Uh, I've attended PyCons in Brazil and yeah, participated of the the Python community in Rio a lot. And I've been to China for for a year. Also, like joined the the Python community there. And it's the first time I'm participating of a bigger event in Poland, so I'm very excited to be here. Uh, yeah, I would like to talk like to each of you in the corridors. It would be great to like, meet you, get to know your experiences. I know there are a lot of other foreigners here too, so yeah, I would like to also get in contact. Uh, yeah, so today I'm gonna talk to you about uh, building amazing web APIs with Django REST framework. Uh, yeah, just uh, to give you some some context, uh, yeah, like the the work we do at, at base, we we basically build a system that that looks like this. Ah, yeah. And now we got the problem with the resolution, right? Uh, yeah, it's it's basically a a platform for salespeople. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the screens uh, we got other screens and uh, yeah it's a, it's a platform to make people 10 times more productive that that's our work uh, we have this platform available on, on the web and on every major mobile platforms so yeah I, I guess like looking from here like the resolution doesn't help much uh, but it's a pretty complex system it supports many many workflows uh, it integrates with your email uh, yeah, it can generate reports, you can manage your contacts, and so on. Uh, yeah, so before we dive into building these, these APIs, like I wanted to, to contextualize uh, like what, what is the problem we are, we're trying to solve, right? So to empower this, this kind of system uh, in the early days, like uh, several years ago, uh, when the company started, we, we were building this with Ruby on Rails. Right? It's a super popular uh, framework. Uh, most of our company uh, come from from the Ruby world, uh, so it, it was a pretty good start. Like, you, you you can get uh, far pretty quick and position your product in the market, and that's what we did. So yeah, Rails was, was great to to start with, but yeah, you know, uh, our 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 culture is is uh, you might see my my T-shirt. Like our slogan is it's new until you ship it. So we really focus on delivering value to customers like pretty, pretty quick, very frenetic pace. Uh, but yeah, this rhythm uh, led us to a, a point where, okay, there's no more way to go. And yeah, that, that Rails application started to suffer a lot. And yeah, we had to, to do something about it. Uh, it. It was a great moment, right? When, when, you, when you have your company and you get to the point where, yeah, that small application that you build and like keep Putting care, uh, it, it doesn't scale anymore. Uh, yeah, that means you're you're becoming successful, right? So that's when we had to take this monolithic Rails application and break it into small services. So we adopted the the architecture of microservices. So basically, we have a huge distributed system running on Amazon infrastructure. Uh, most of our services were built using Ruby, right? That, that's the expertise we had in-house. Uh, so we had tens of uh, Ruby services uh, and a lot of other infrastructure to, to support that, like database servers, uh, like message queues, and, and like we use Elasticsearch, Kafka, Redis, a lot of cool technology. Uh, yeah, so we are in a Python conference, right? You, you, you want to know about Python, not, not about Ruby. Uh, and, and the cool thing about this architecture is that it, it has nothing to do with Ruby. There is nothing uh, here that is specifically to some, to some language. Uh, when you build a system like this, you have the freedom to use whatever you need, whatever suits your, your, your need. And in particular, our, our need was to grow, right? So we basically, like everyone in, in Krakow knows about base, and yeah, the, the whole uh, Ruby market was uh, exhausted and we still had to grow and the natural choice was to grow towards the direction of, uh, of having Python teams. 
So about a year ago, and I'm happy to say that uh, I, I was the guy beginning the Python team uh, in last November, uh, and, and we have here like Pavel works with me too in the in the Python team there. Uh, yeah, and then we had this challenge. Okay, like you have a growing company, a lot of experienced developers building uh, applications using Ruby, yeah, delivering features very quick, and now okay, you have the task of uh, yeah, you don't have the three years background that they have in the system, and you just have to perform the same way, right? Uh, yeah, big challenge. Uh, we had to take like some decisions, prepare our stack, uh, yeah, fasten our seat belts, and yeah, get going. So that's when we started doing Python web services in base, and now the picture looks more like this. There is still a lot of Ruby, of course, uh, yeah, a lot of people in the company are, are, are Rubyists, but now we just put the snakes in, in, in the middle of those the, those Rubies. Uh, okay, so how how do we actually are able to to I wouldn't say compete, but like just follow the rhythm of, of the rest of the company, right? So we had to build on on the shoulder of giants, uh, and in particular, one of the things that empower us to move fast is using Django REST framework. And that's that's the framework uh, we will be talking today. Uh, yeah, and, and basically I, I'll try to show you how it, it could work for you too, right? So what are the cool things in Django REST framework that you can leverage and maybe empower your next project or even, I don't know, uh, depending on, on, on yeah, w what you're building today, you, you might start to use Django REST framework right away. Or maybe you're already using it. Maybe there is someone here already using Django REST framework. Uh, yeah, please raise your hands. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, so the name of this talk is like amazing uh, web APIs. You might be wondering, like, okay, uh, amazing. Yeah, how how does it get amazing? Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, uh, with with REST framework, what I mean by amazing is that uh, yeah, you can do stuff pretty quick. Uh, so it, it, it's amazing how uh, like sort of very small library can give you so much power uh, and and still it gives you a lot of flexibility so you, you can go like very quick by just following the conventions and the patterns the framework gives you but whenever you need to deviate and do something customized that fits your process fits your company yeah you can do that too uh, and yeah like when we're talking about web services, there, there's a lot of ways to, to think about this, right? And I don't know, if you are in the Java world, you're thinking about more complicated enterprise web services and things like this. We are going to leave aside the purity of REST and all the cool things you can do like with more complicated web services. And we're going to just focus on JSON APIs, what like we are doing now, modern times, 2014, right? Just like other companies like GitHub, Twitter, Facebook. They all operate on JSON REST APIs, and we don't focus a lot on, on the purity of REST uh, as the standard, but more on the pragmatic of, of building web APIs. Uh, yeah, so this talk might might be like complicated; it's difficult to put code into slides. I want to explain like every concept, but we also have uh, our stand uh, there, like in the in this uh, in this hall. Uh, and I, I want to leave the invitation that whoever is interested in experimenting with uh, Django REST framework, that we have there some notebooks set up, and yeah, we'll have a programming task, and yeah, you, you can get a hands-on experience with this if you're interested. Uh, yeah, so this is like just the, the beginning of the conversation we, we want to have with you. Uh, yeah, so for for the sake of example. Uh, uh, let, let's consider this API. So you basically have a, a service running in some, for example, here you have service.getbase.com. And what you want to do is you, you want to go from a series of HTTP requests uh, and to, to some endpoints. So like you have get request, post, put, delete, uh, to a use endpoint. And in the end of the day, what you want to achieve is like you, you, you want to get a response like a piece of JSON, right? So pretty simple. Uh, we're not complicating stuff. Uh, so you have URLs, you get back JSON from it, right? And how do we feel this, uh, yeah, 
the middle of it. Uh, so what, what REST framework is going to give you when you build this web API is that uh, you can support a tons of s types of, of uh, clients. So in our case, we have the iOS applications, Windows Phone, Android. Uh, we have the, the browser as a client, right? We build a single page application structure with backbone. Uh, and all of these things consume the web API. Uh, and not only one web API, of course, right? So every service has an API. And, and then this web API gives you access to the whole infrastructure we have running the, the actual system. Uh, and it's important to notice that uh, we eat our own dog food. So the other services, they're also consuming the, the API you build. Uh, so uh, as you can imagine, like we started uh, uh, not like we, we were not designing this product from from the very beginning, right? Me, uh, like we as a, as a Python team. So there was already a lot of uh, other services built in other languages, and we had to be able to to do something that follow the standards and integrate with the rest of the system. And to do that, both Ruby services consume data produced by Python services, and and vice versa. So. It's very cool to be in an environment where you are language agnostic. Uh, I have another talk tomorrow about the Go language. So I'm a kind of person that I love languages, both programming languages and spoken languages. So like, yeah, when I was in China, I learned some Chinese, and I'm learning some, some Polish now. And yeah, I, I'm just amazed by how you can mix and match all those things uh, to do very powerful stuff. Uh, so. REST framework brings in a bunch of concepts. It's, you might think it's very complicated. There are so many things to, to think about. Uh, you already had to learn a lot of things to, to build applications with Django. Uh, I guess a lot of you might have experience with this, uh, given that yeah, like one third of the audience uh, knows about REST framework. So I, I, I'll just like go through each step on how you can build your, your application. Uh, and it's, yeah, you just start like you would start any other Django application, right? So Django admin, start project, uh, then you can start an app. Uh, in, in this case, it's called the app API, but yeah, in practice, you, you can call it whatever, right? Uh, so yeah, that, that's what you get, like just simple files. Uh, and the only things you're going to use here, like you're, you're all probably using uh, pip to install your packages. So we have this requirements file. And everything we need is like just Django, Django 1.7, uh, and Django REST framework. Uh, so I'm going to show you how simple it is to put some data out and do that piece of magic that we mentioned at the beginning, right? How to go from URLs to some JSON that you can serve to, to your uh, clients. So first thing, you need to define a data model, right? This might be the hardest part of all. Uh, you have to model and think carefully how you want to represent uh, whatever it is uh, you need to expose. Uh, yeah, you, in, our, in our case, like we, we already have an existing system. So it's not like you start with a for example, user model from Django or something like this. No, we, we need to think about other types of objects. They might have relationships. Uh, in this case, I'll just start with a very simple one. We have there a, a DU class. Uh, yeah, so we are building a business software. So that's why it came to my mind representing a DU. And in a very simplified model, a DU just has a name, some value, and the date it was uh, last updated. Uh, so yeah, this is like pure, pure jungle, right? Nothing new here. You just define your model, run syncdb, and now with Django 1.7, you run migrate. Uh, and then, okay, how, how do you go from here and actually start putting this on the web as, as JSON? To do that, you need a serializer. Uh, and with Django REST framework, it's as simple as this. Boom. You just declare which model this, uh, this serializer is, is, is related to. 
and the framework will do the magic for you. Then you take a view. Just very simple again, right? Uh, you just need to, to specify a query set. That's basically from where you're going to take the data. Uh, in this case, we are, we are getting all objects from, from the deals table. Uh, and, and the serializer, we saw in the previous slide. And again, Django REST framework will do everything for you. OK, now we need to plug stuff, right? URLs. OK, URLs, you just, uh, yeah. Here, REST framework gives this, uh, this abstraction of a router. Uh, so y you can create a router, register your, your view set, and then, boom, you have URLs. You put them together with your other URLs in your Django application, like you would do with any other uh, pluggable app that you include in your project. Then you, you put the uh, REST framework in your installed apps in your settings by. And here we are also including the, the API we just wrote. And that's it. Boom. That's what uh, Django REST framework is going to give you. So one of the cool things about the REST framework is that it gives you a browsable API. So yeah, you don't have to be stuck into doing curl and, and other tools to test your API. You can get started really, really quick. So as you saw, like in very few steps, you have something out. Uh, if you click on the link there, yeah, I think it's terrible to, to see it, right? I'm sorry about that. Uh, when you click on, on your API endpoint, and here I'm, I'm going there on API view one deals, it just lists all the deals you have. And in, 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 in here we have nothing. So that's actually a JSON for an empty list. Don't know if you can see that. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, so this doesn't work. But yeah, you, you, you basically have. Uh, this web page, it's, it's kind of comparable to what you get with Django Admin, right? So Django Admin lets you get started pretty quick. You define your models, and then you have a administration interface. Uh, with Django REST Framework, you define your, your serializers. Uh, you put there the URLs, and then you have a API administration interface for free, let's say. Uh, and other nice thing, you can post data directly uh, from here. And you can start creating, uh, creating like inserting data into your database straight from this page. That's certainly not what you want to expose to your real clients, uh, but it, this is an excellent tool for development. You can use as well uh, curl. So that that would be the equivalent to access the the API. And as you can see, we get back. Uh, the same JSON. Okay. But honestly, I think it's all magic. And yeah, I don't like, I don't like magic that much. Uh, yeah, otherwise maybe I would be doing Rails, right? Uh, yeah, we are Pythonistas. We would like everything explicit and explained, and that's how I like it. So let's try to understand better each of those concepts and what's actually going on behind the scenes, right? Uh, yeah, so the first thing we talked about were, were models. And yeah, it's very important to understand. I said this is the hardest part, and it really is. Uh, but in, in terms of REST framework, it, it doesn't change how you interact with models. So you get the same thing as you do in your Django applications. Your models are the mapping between your your database and your Python code. So here is where you think how you represent the relationships between your objects, between your domain entities, uh, and you just follow Django tutorials. Uh, you take all your knowledge from uh, re relational databases and, and you apply it here. Uh, and then comes something that might be very tricky to understand. And, and I want to, to make it very clear what the serializers are. 
because yeah, when when we saw it in in the first time, it looks like okay, you just say this is about this model, and then yeah, boom, thing it works. No, it's it's not really that, right? It it, it can't be um, yeah that that magical. So the serializer here is the part that uh, it, it, I, I call it like a translator, right? Uh, whenever yeah, I'm learning Chinese and I need to check up some word, uh, I'm gonna use a dictionary and I go like from English to to Chinese. Unfortunately, I couldn't go from Portuguese to Chinese. There's no such dictionary in the world. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, the serializer gives you this. You can go from your model uh, to some uh, JSON, right? That, that's what you wanna get. And you can go the other way. You can go from JSON and deserialize it, get a model. Uh, but, yeah, not not exactly that. Uh, in fact, with serializers, you can go from any object, any specialized object, into simpler Python primitives. That's what uh, the serializer are really about. Uh, so, the, 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 the case here with models is just a special case, right? So, the case here that you go from a jungle model into directly to JSON, it's just a special case, and, 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 and in that case, you're using a model serializer. It's a feature from REST framework to let you go quicker when you need. But imagine, for example, you're not using a SQL database. You're using MongoDB. You're using Redis. So your models are not stored. You're probably not using Django ORM, right? You're using something else. And then you might think, okay, so now I cannot use Django REST framework? No, not true, right? As I said, it's very flexible. So it lets you specify how to go from any kind of object to Python primitives. Here is how we could have written uh, the previous uh, that that serializer for a deal, right? Before it had uh, what two three lines. Now it gets yeah more complicated, but it's still it's, it's not very different than Django forms or Django models. You basically declare what are the fields. So in this case, we have like ID, name, value, updated that. We tell what types they are. Uh, and then we describe to REST framework how to go from uh, a bunch of Python primitives into an object, right? It cannot discover magically that you have to build an instance of a do. So you tell it explicitly what to do. So in, here is where you could, for example, plug something you're storing on MongoDB. Uh, you, you might not need the ORM when you're using MongoDB. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So you might be thinking about, okay, what about the other part, right? Here is basically how to go from primitives to an object. But what about going from an object to primitives? This is still REST framework can do automatically, right? Using Python, you can... Uh, for example, try to get an attribute of an object or try to access it as a dictionary. Uh, so, uh, by default, REST framework will do that for you. Still, if you need to code that part, you can just uh, override one more method of this uh, class and then you get it. Like, you can customize everything. How do you go from primitive types to the JSON? we really want. Uh, so REST framework supports not only JSON, uh, even though at, at base our APIs are, are all using JSON because yeah, that's like standard. Uh, we could be doing as well YAML, XML, yeah, whatever else you want. I, I wouldn't like to be doing XML, but. Uh, and as you can see, we, all can, we all can also render HTML, right? That browsable uh, interface is, is yeah, nothing more than HTML pages, uh, and the way to go from from primitive types uh, to those serialized formats is by using renders, uh, renderers, and the way back is using parsers. So, content negotiation you have uh, you, you can of course customize this uh, in REST framework. You get for free a lot of. Uh, a lot of renders and parsers that knows about this common format. Uh, yeah, basically, for 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 like for most of us, we are just gonna use the JSON renderer that knows how to do the right thing 
for example, it knows how to handle, uh, handle dates, right? In our, in our case, we are using updated that, which is a date time object. It knows how to, how to handle that. Uh, and when we're reading data back, right, uh, it, it's important to, to, to think that we not only speed JSON, but we also consume JSON. You can send a payload in a request saying, update this deal with these this, this values. Uh, yeah, so we, we have to understand what is in the JSON, transform it into an instance uh, of a model, save it, uh, and go on. But okay, let, let, let's uh, zoom out of, of this, right? We, we look into, we were very close to the data, data representation, how to convert formats, but we are still missing one part. So how to go from that URL there and really touch our data? Uh, so to do that, we need uh, the, this notion of the router. Uh, in, in Django, pure Django, you don't have this. Uh, but I, I think router is a, is a very good abstraction. It basically lets you specify in a clear and concise way what groups of uh, endpoints and HTTP methods go to what view. So you have there like get API view you want to connect this with a certain API view. Then you use the router. And uh, and it's, it's the view that is the finally the point where you're going to have at your disposal a request and a response. Here is where the magic is going to happen. But before that, uh, just like when you're using your Django applications, you can have a series of uh, middlewares, right? There are things that happen before the request is eventually handed to the view. Uh, with REST framework, you also have that. And that's, for example, where you're going to plug authentication and permission checking. Uh, I guess this is a very important thing in your API, right? Like some APIs are, are open, but I guess most are not. So if you're doing your internal application, you certainly need to check if this user is logged in, if he has the right credentials, and if he's able to access this view. Uh, and yeah, I guess these two concepts, they, they might not be very clear to a lot of people. They, they kind of overlap, uh, but it's, it's very important to have a clear understanding of, of what they really mean. So authentication is a, nothing more than checking who you are right so when 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 you run authentication you, you want to know like who is this person or who is this machine who is this whatever that is making this request uh, is it uh, Pavel or is it Rodolfo uh, of course like Django REST framework gives you out of the box lot of implementations of uh, common authentication methods. So, of course, you get for free OAuth, you get for free token-based authentication, but you might want to write your own custom authentication that suits uh, whatever your company uses. So, for example, at Base, we use our own uh, method, our own service, right? We have a lot of services. One of them is responsible for authentication. And that's what we're going to use uh, with REST framework and we have this flexibility to tell what authentication method or how to perform this authentication. So in this example here, uh, and as you can see, like all you have to do to, to implement your own custom authentication is to create a, a class, subclassing from base authentication from Django REST framework and write this authenticate method. Uh, and in, inside this method, uh, there, there, there might be three things happening. First of them is that you return none. What does it mean? Uh, you might have several ways of authenticating. So, for example, you can use together OAuth and a token-based authentication. Uh, for I don't know, maybe you want to give a, a possibility of of your clients r calling your API from some mobile device and you give them a token and then they can call your API. Uh, so you basically have in place at the same time two authentication methods. 
to whenever one of the authentication methods does not apply, you want to return known from this authenticate method. And that's basically saying like, okay, I don't know what to do. Uh, this authentication method does not apply. You return known. Uh, so then automatically you're going to try the next method. So for example, if, if in this case here, you check for a token and then there's no token in the request headers. Uh, you're, you're just going to uh, say, okay, so if there's no token, try the next method. Maybe the next method is OAuth and you fulfill the requirements for, for that. Or maybe uh, no authentication method is going to work and then you have basically an unauthenticated request, which is also possible. Uh, next thing that can happen is uh, you, you raise an exception. If you raise the authentication failed exception, it, it means that you tried to authenticate with that method, so that was a valid method, but uh, for example, in this case there, that the user does not exist, or this authentication failed, right? Failed is different than does not apply. Uh, and in this case, no other, no further authentication method would be tried, uh, and you're, you're, you're basically going to get an authentication failed HTTP response. Uh, so the other, the third and last thing that can happen here is that you just return uh, a tuple with two things. One is the user, and this will be available at request.user for your view. And the other one is uh, anything that represents this authentication method. Uh, in this case here, we're returning a string. You could have your own custom type of object that you can use also in the view to figure out what was the authentication method that eventually was used. Yeah. So, second part of the story, permissions. I explained what, are, what is authentication. So authentication, I want to know who you are. So, what is permission? Okay, you are Rodolfo, but sorry, you cannot enter this room. Uh, so, permission is can you access this? Can you do it? Can you perform this action? Can you see this object? That's permission. And it's also very simple to write your own uh, permission classes in Django REST framework. Of course, it gives you a lot of built-in uh, permission classes, right? For example, permission classes if, if you are authenticated. So as long as I know who you are, you can use this API. It would be that. Uh, here I have like a yeah, maybe funny uh, permission class, right? It's a random access. So yeah, if random greater than half, okay, you can get in. So the kind of 50% of times you can use it, uh, the other 50, no, sorry, like, yeah, permission uh, forbidden, right? HTTP forbidden. Uh, yeah, and, and so there, there, there are two types of permissions. One is this general one, which is simpler to understand. Uh, it, it, it basically says, okay, you, you can perform uh, this action or not. Uh, and, and, and there's one more level of granularity that, that, that you can go on, which is uh, specifying object level permissions. So imagine you have uh, a DU, right? And I'm not talking about you using the DU endpoints, but I'm talking about can you see this specific DU with ID 42, right? And one of the one of the ways I could do it is by asking if uh, the the current request user is equal to the object owner. So you can only see things that you own. All the rest is is hidden. Uh, and of course, like you can use request user because authentication happened before permission checking. Uh, okay, so. Write a lot of views. Django REST framework gives you another concept that lets you encapsulate all this, and it's called the view set. Basically, for most endpoints, you have uh, to handle get, post, put, and delete requests. So instead of writing these as separate views, as you would have to do with Django, uh, you can group this all together in one class, and this is the view set. Uh, 
So we also saw like a view set in a very magical way that you just tell it what is the query set and what is the uh, what is the query set and the room uh, the serializer. Sorry, uh, and here is like a full example where uh, you actually uh, write the code yourself. So. As, as you can see, like it's in the view that you actually use the serializers, and this is where where all the pieces are glued together, right? We talk about the model serializers, and yeah, a lot of things. We talk about the the routing, and in the end of the day, you you end up in this view, and here you use the serializer both to consume data, so you can deserialize uh, the data using the serializer, as as highlighted there. Then. Uh, you can use this both in the happy path uh, to, for example, you, you can validate your serializer just like Django Forms, and then you can go through the happy path and, and return, uh, in this case, HTTP 201 created, uh, means, for example, that you just created a new view, and you can pass the data, and uh, this response object will then uh, be turned into the JSON we, we saw. Uh, or you can also use the serializer in the not so happy paths when you have errors, like validation errors or, or, or otherwise. And you can also build your response out of that. And yeah, there are a lot of interesting things in Django REST framework. For those of you that are uh, using it every day, like I know that you're thinking like, okay, what else, right? And so many things. It, it helps you test your API. I love one thing, it's uh, called uh, the Django REST Swagger. It's a library that you can connect with a REST framework and expose API documentation for your project. Like This is super good. Uh, it's good for internal development, document their APIs and tell everyone how to use it. Uh, it's good for open source projects, like really, really must see. Uh, Django REST framework gives you other types of middleware, for example, for controlling the, the frequency that someone can, can consume your API. Uh, it, gives you it gives you pagination, so many other things. Uh, when, when we are using Django, Django REST framework at base, uh, one of the first things we had to do was uh, start turning Django to work in a way that is suitable for serving uh, web APIs. Uh, we, we don't need a lot of the things that Django comes with. Uh, so th those are topics that I would love to talk about, but I also don't want to prolong myself and like, consume a lot of your time. So I, I kind of invite you all for, for a conversation about those topics with us. Uh, we also started to build a lot of patterns and digging really deep into Django REST framework. Like I submitted several patches to Tom Christie, the, the creator and maintainer of the project. Uh, yeah, we had to dive deep into how to customize certain things, but it's a really, really uh, pleasant uh, work uh, when, when you deal with a uh, REST framework. The code base is very clean. Documentation is great. So it's a totally recommended technology to put on your stack if you're not using it yet. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to ask what are your questions. Uh, we have, uh, I think, about uh, maybe 10 minutes yeah, to, to, to talk more. So, please, yeah. Thank you very much. So in your talk, you actually explained how to use the Django REST framework when you have Django as the backend yeah. doing your stuff, like models and URLs and everything you defined in a Django application, right? Yes. But at base, you said you had different other things like Android, iOS, Ruby, and everything. So could you tell me something that I could maybe go back and look up on how to integrate Django REST framework to serve as an API for those things? So. Oh. The, the clients, like w when you build a server, it's totally agnostic of, of the client, right? So basically, when you're building the API, you're building a contract. 
you're saying that this is what I expect as an input, this is what I will give you as an output. So there is nothing specific to say like, for example, we could check like if the request comes from Android, then I'm going to do something different. Uh, if the request comes from iOS, I'm going to do something different than Android. We could do that by, by identifying, for example, request headers. But there is nothing particular to, uh, for example, influencing the, the design of the, the Android application. Right? The Android application is just going to use some, uh, some library to make HTTP requests and integrate with the, with the API. One thing we, we can do, uh, and, and we have partially this, is have an API client. Uh, this would be some code that you can use to, instead of making this HTTP request, you call methods or functions. Uh, Actually, man, on the backend side of things, when you have a Ruby application running, yes, can you have a Rust framework in front of it to act as an API for that Ruby application that you have over there? Uh, yeah, it depends on how, how you think about it, because you can have, a, and, and we do have this, we have a certain core uh, parts of the system that are Ruby applications and uh, the Django and Django REST framework uh, applications need to consume or sometimes, for example, uh, authentication, right? It comes from a service called Core. Uh, every every request that goes to one of the Django web web APIs, uh, we do need to, like the, that, that uh, authentication code that, that I showed, what we have there is a call to Core and check, does this user uh, exist in the system? Can he see this object he's trying to request? Yes or no? So yeah, that, that's one of the parts where we had to customize Django REST framework to suit our needs. But totally, like you can use Django REST framework as a front door to other services. And that's the beauty of, of this architecture. Uh -huh. Great. Uh, more questions? <laughs> yeah, let, let's give people time to breathe. Why uh, did you choose uh, Django RESTful over, did you uh, consider other alternatives over uh, RESTful, for example, TastyPy? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. Uh, what, what's your name? Sorry? Bart, okay. Uh, so, Bart, yeah, like about a year ago, we were asking ourselves this question, right? So, which direction to go? The the probably the highest challenge was to don't feel overpaced by the rest of the company. So, we had already a story that we went from Ruby on Rails to our own in-house framework called Tiramisu, and then back to Rails for ease of maintenance. And, and, and basically, we had to choose something that gives us power to move very fast, but it still is customizable enough. Because for example, we need to, to follow other patterns that are perhaps not the jungle patterns, but the company-wide patterns. Uh, and yeah, we did look into, for example, TastyPy. TastyPy back then looked like a dead project, and today, even more. Uh, and Django REST framework looked like the obvious go-to solution. It had a lot more uh, activity on GitHub, better documentation, in my opinion. Uh, we have now Django REST framework. Uh, they, uh, Tom Christie sent a, a petition on, on Quickstarter, and he got a lot of funding for building Django REST framework 3.0 with uh, some big refactorings on serializers. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the way to go in terms of Python ecosystem and building web APIs. Uh, still, we do uh, sometimes not going with the whole jungle stack and, and yeah, kind of the consequences that, that, it, that it brings. So we are considering using perhaps some lighter framework like, like Flask. And there are some equivalent things for Flask, maybe not so popular, not so well documented, but we've been considering those things too. Right? We have this flexibility to, in one project, use one technology. In other project, maybe we have different uh, requirements and we can afford to 
to simply change the stack. Does it answer your question? Yeah. Uh, over there. So just just to remind you, we have uh, computers uh, just a few meters from here, and we have their Django REST framework installed. Uh, if you wanna have a try, like see how it works, yeah, it would be a, ple a pleasure to to sit with you and and yeah, dive into some coding. That, that's what we all like, right? Right. My question is, um, could you give us some tips on testing? Uh, Django REST framework, if you do any testing, uh, I don't know. Yeah, of uh, course we do. <laughs> uh, yeah, so testing is a awesome uh, topic, right? Like, uh, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with uh, agile development. I've been uh, like learning about these things for almost 10 years now. Uh, I started the coding dojo, uh, yeah, because I simply love so Coding Dojo, I don't know if everyone is familiar with, with the with the topic. We are going to have one in the conference. Uh, I suggest everyone to attend. Uh, I'll be there. Uh, so testing in, in Django REST framework, you have all the tools you have in Django, plus some very nice things that connect super well with REST framework. So for example, you have... Uh, in Django, you have some sort of API uh, client that you can test your requests and do sort of integration test level things. Uh, with REST framework, you have the same. And it basically understands, uh, I didn't mention, but those requests and response objects, they are not the same as uh, Django request and, and response objects. They are a bit smarter. So for example, in the request, instead of getting .post and .get dictionaries, you get .data which is whatever data was sent already uh, deserialized. So for example, if you come as YAML, you're not going to get YAML text. You're going to get Python primitives or Python objects if you use the serializer. So uh, with REST framework, you have uh, tools to write tests like this. So you basically, for example, create a client, and then you pass a dictionary, and it's automatically going to call your endpoint uh, with that data. So just to give you more like real life insights on this, uh, when when we write our projects, we, we try to focus on, on several levels. We normally don't write all the logic uh, like in the jungle way, but we try to write a pure Python system, which is testable, uh, and we can write super quick tests using normal unit testing strategy. Uh, and we leave to, to the slow tests flow. Uh, only the things that are critical uh, to the API, like checking format, some corner case paths, and stuff like this. And th 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 that's when we use uh, this uh, this flow of actually making requests and 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 like checking the response. But this is super slow. That's why I think that the tip here is don't put all your code in Django. It doesn't have to be like that, right? You can write to good old Python. Uh, put a lot of logic there, test it super fast, and then make a very minimal web application that just expose those things. That's my tip. Does it answer your question? Okay. Have here. Actually, that should be the last short question. And okay. yep. yeah. So thanks, guys, for for your interest. If I don't have time to answer your questions, please like come talk to me in the corridor. I'll be Super pleased to, to answer. Okay, so I have a quick, maybe quick question. And do you use some Django REST framework extensions like nested routers or DRF uh, extensions? Uh, we don't really use. We use uh, REST Swagger, as I mentioned, for for generating documentation. Uh, we don't really use any other third-party uh, library, but we do use our own. So we built a lot of customization on top of this to suit our needs, and when we do use that. Are there open source? <laughs> uh, no, they, they're very specific to how our system works, so it doesn't, it doesn't make sense as an open source tool. Okay, okay. thanks. Mm -hmm.
Welcome. Uh, hi. Uh, what will be your suggestion uh, uh, how to work with nested objects uh, in uh, Django REST framework? Uh, when I worked uh, last time with nested objects, uh, it was uh, something tricky with uh, uh, tasks if I want to get some fields uh, of nested object of nested object. Uh, how you process uh, this in your company? Yeah. This is a complicated question. Uh, we have short time, but I'll still answer it. Uh, basically, we messed around a lot with this. We have a lot of uh, uh, nested representations in, in our models. Uh, and yeah, Django REST framework 2.x has a lot of problems in this area, a lot of bugs. Uh, and fortunately, 3.0 is coming and it's going to fix these things. Uh, a lot of things that we wrote custom code was around this part. So. Yeah, we've done a lot of mucking around, reading the source, and like implementing stuff that that suit our needs there. So yeah, probably if, if you want, like we can talk more about this later. Yes, but it's, it yeah, will be very great. tricky stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Rodolfo. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. You're all awesome. Uh, have a great conference.